College football is in full swing as it heads into week five and conference play begins to ramp up. Welcome back to Penn State Sports Night. I'm Lauren Harth, joined by Sofia Monteforte and Brian Fortney. With conference play just getting started, this is the beginning of new head-to-head -head in conference matchups with the conference realignment starting this season. The Big Ten, adding Oregon, Washington, USC, and UCLA, has gotten rid of divisions within the conference. The SEC will feature past college football playoff matchups during the regular season with the addition of Oklahoma and Texas. The ACC, on the other hand, has added SMU, Cal, and Stanford, while Florida State and Clemson have both voiced complaints over TV rights. Conference realignment is not the only new thing on the horizon for this college football season. The expanded playoffs will make it its long-awaited debut this season. The formerly dreaded two-loss season may now be a strong enough record for the Power Four to find their way into the playoffs. Let's break down what fans might see as the rest of the season unfolds. So far in the Big Ten, there have been six in-conference matchups starting this week that's going to be exclusively Big Ten play. Sophia, what are you looking forward to seeing? So there's actually two games I'm looking forward to seeing. The first one I would say is Michigan versus Washington because that's a college football playoff rematch. Now both teams aren't really where they were at last season and aren't really in the talk for contenders. I mean Michigan did get blown out by Texas, but still I think that would light a fire under those two teams and make it a really good match. And then another one I'm actually looking forward to is Penn State versus Illinois at Penn State this weekend. I think that's a good match, a top 20 matchup. And Illinois is coming off a high. They're a 4-0 and they have versed two ranked teams on the road so far. Penn State also is coming off that 56 to nothing against Kent State. And I really think even though it's number 9 and number 19, it's not as far as people would think off. And Illinois has just as good of a chance as Penn State does, so that's a matchup I'm actually really excited for. Yeah, well, an under-the-radar matchup, I think, this weekend is going to be Washington and Rutgers. I think that plays on Friday night. Because Rutgers comes in, in the game, another 3-0 start. Greg Schiano has the guys rolling. But uh, Washington coming into this game after taking care of business against Northwestern is going to be a really uh, interesting matchup, seeing how Greg Schiano takes on you know, the Huskies. I definitely agree with both of you, and I'm mostly excited to see kind of what you touched on, Sophia, how the West Coast teams do when they travel East and how the East Coast teams do when they travel West. That's not a factor they're used to having play into their regular season. Usually that's just a factor for a bowl game or a postseason game, so I think that's really exciting to see. And I'm also just excited for these more competitive matches to get underway. Ohio State has only led up 20 points but they haven't yet played a strong team to be able to see these, to be able to accurately compare them to another team to really say it's the Big Ten championship title is theirs to have. Mm -hmm. Switching over to where things really do just mean more, down in the SEC, they added Texas and Oklahoma this season. Oklahoma just lost to Tennessee in their SEC game opener, but Texas, on the other hand, holds the number one spot. What can we expect to see with these new teams in the SEC? Yeah, well, I think the teams could really expect, SEC teams should really expect fans base to be just more electric and something that they haven't seen before because that is like a whole aspect to the SEC is the atmosphere. And then another thing would be the Red River rivalry now that Texas and Oklahoma are now in the same conference. I think that adds to the rivalry as well as what it already was. And something else Texas can now be proud in holding that spot as being the number one team in Texas because they'll play Texas A&M and not only were they beating them in that game but now they can take that conference title and the state title. Well it's a tale of two stories as the newcomers Oklahoma and Texas are fighting different battles right now. As for Oklahoma, Michael Hawkins coming in for quarterback uh, Jackson Arnold and instead Texas is kind of on easy street with Arch Manning. Uh, the opening line was 38 uh, against Mississippi State this weekend at home so that's a uh, I think that's and then going down the stretch they only have Oklahoma and they have Georgia but uh, Oklahoma has a really really tough schedule in the SEC so they're gonna really get tested Texas not as much uh, and you know we'll get to see Quinn Ewers uh, soon enough here in this SEC play and I agree with you that I think Oklahoma is gonna be the team that struggles more 
and stays in that lower half of the AP poll being at SEC schedule because Texas, even though they are just joining in, they're kind of used to that. Even last year they were performing so well in and out of college playoff um, contention. So I don't think that's going to be a big culture shock to them. But Oklahoma might have a little more trouble, but I think eventually they'll be able to hang. You guys are so right with that. I also think that something I'm looking forward to personally is now that like Alabama and Georgia will play each other in the regular season, that has strictly been a SEC championship game or a college football playoff game, and now we're getting that in season, and it'll really show the weaknesses and the strengths of both teams, and that'll be really exciting to see. Transitioning over to this conference that always seems to get a bad rap, the ACC. They're always criticized for their not as strong schedules, the strength of the other teams within the conference. What, but with the new expanded playoffs this season, how do you guys think this will impact their chances to get into the college football playoffs? Brian, I'll start with you. Uh, so, well, I see, uh, you know, Miami with uh, Xavier Restrepo uh, and Cam Ward, who has been a good system quarterback at Washington State and FCS Increment, were really taking them to new heights this season. And then also as well, I think it's Miami and Clemson at the top. Louisville has a prove, it, prove yourself game uh, this weekend against Notre Dame. And I think they enter themselves into the uh, college football playoff fold. So you really have three good college football teams in the ACC. And then, you know, bottom down, you also have Boston College. You have some of the other teams, Stanford with a surprise. It's going to be uh, really, really interesting to see how all this kind of plays out uh, in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, I agree with you. The thing about Miami, although they're making a good contender for the ACC and representing it well, I don't think they deserve to be at seven right now, and I don't think they think they should be at seven right now. I think that LSU and Mizzou should sneak back in that top ten spot, or at least top twelve, where they usually are right now. They're falling a little behind, and but usually each year Louisville will stay around like fifteen to sixteen around there. They could be that sneaky dangerous competitor. So I'm not too surprised by that this year. And I'm happy to see ACC shining that way because usually the top twenty five is swallowed by SEC teams. So I'm happy about it, but I do think that as the weeks go on, it's still early. Teams are getting their footing and now like you said earlier, it's getting more competitive. So I think Miami's gonna bump down. Maybe we can play around with Clemson, Louisville, but yeah. I think the biggest thing is that they're now playing for that auto bid. They have a chance to make it. As you touched on, the SEC has always dominated the top 25, but now they're battling each other to get that auto bid. So I think it really builds up the stakes that even though they might not have the strength of schedule, only three teams are ranked compared to the SEC's eight teams that are ranked. It really just builds up the hype for them going into the end of the season. As the season continues to unfold, fans will see how these new in-conference matchups shake out with the expanded playoffs on the line. For Sophia Monteforte and Brian Portney, I'm Lauren Harth. Thanks for watching and have a great night. Hey everybody, thank you for tuning into this edition of Penn State Sports Night. We hope you liked that segment. And we're sure there's other Penn State Sports Night segments that you are going to love as well. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more content. And check us out on social media for updates and behind the scenes clips and pics. Follow us on Twitter at PSSNTV and on Instagram at PSU Sports Night to keep up with all the action. For all of us here at the Belisari Media Center, we are Penn State Sports Night.